we go. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? Yeah. Um, the minutes. I don't think we're. I don't think we have yeah, I'm noticing the agenda calls for August 2nd and 5th, and the ones we got are July 31st and August 5th. Is that just a cycle error in the agenda? Uh, yeah, uh, so the, the, the August 2nd <laughs> should will be minutes, but those aren't ready yet. There was a, a miscommunication that provided not a deliberation. Uh, okay, so the July 31st should be added. Yes. Scratch the August 2nd and we'll add it to July 31st. And any other changes for then? Did we get the July 5th? Yes. It's from, oh, no, August 5th. Uh, excuse me, August. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I'd like to add an item of talk about arson for a couple minutes. Any other items? I'm Brian. No. Okay. With that, is the board prepared to approve the meeting minutes for July 31st and August 5th? So moved, Mr. Chairman. We have motion. We have a second. I just want to check my dates to make sure that's the one I looked at. Actually, for the not be right in front of you. July 31st and July 30th. Yes, July 31st and August 5th. The two yeah, can be had. Right. 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 So I want to check my calendar. I thought that Friday was Thursday. Okay. I think you're right. Friday. Yeah, it should have been July 30th, not 31st. Okay. So would you yes. entertain a motion to modify that to July 30th? I know I read them all. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? This is for July 30th. Second. And August 5th. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? I have a friendly amendment to uh, correct the spelling of my name. Is it spelling your name wrong? Probably I did. It has me on the end. On which one? Fair. E. July 31st. Okay. Oh, yeah. Is that a friendly amendment? Yes. Consider friendly amendment. Any other discussion? None. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Seven. Yep. Rosemary, you got the floor. I Is that the town share? Yes. I'm going to put that in a different fund so we can keep it completely separate. You said 110,000. It's around 111. 111,000. Sure, fund just got going to. It's going to have its own fund. It won't be in with the general fund. And I'll, I'll make a separate check with the board also. You said this is the first half. So. First half. So we should get somewhere around two hundred and twenty thousand. Okay, good. And we have a list of the major tax holders. We still have fifty-six thousand six hundred ninety-six dollars. And late this afternoon, I got an email from our tax attorney, Angela Ross. She has decided to stop doing tax sales. 
and she has recommended Kira Davis Cole, who used to live in Johnson, but she they sold her house sometimes last year. And she has an office in Barton. And she does about handles dozens of others. She's willing to hand over the wives to Board's pleasure. Recommendation is over. What was her name? Sarah Davis Cole. I think very highly of her. She's uh, really good. In fact, I think she's the one that discovered a few years back that we didn't own that park behind your house, Secretary Field, and actually belonged to the school board. She was a school board member. Mm -hmm. She figured that out. Yeah, I have her also. So did you saw move? Moving that we uh, hired for yeah, surgery was called. That's it. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? None. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? I'll contact her and see if she's really interested. Thank you. She's not for that, really. <laughs> <laughs> and the current taxes are. We saw we had a last uh, two years ago because this time we hadn't sent tax bills out. Okay. We were at thirty-seven percent fully collected. And two years ago we were at thirty-five percent. All the way ahead. Anybody any questions? Okay. Thank you very much, Jason. You get the floor. By the way, thank you for the guys for everything. You're welcome. Been doing. Do you have a report for? I did. I give it to Brian. Okay. Should be. Making your pass. Or no, it did, but it made it in on a later page. It's like the fourth from the last. Thing. Yeah. The last yeah, the title probably worked. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. No, that's the, it's on the report, that's the job description. Uh -huh. I don't need to make any of the back. Uh, no. So oh, Jason, you did a great job of providing a report. <laughs> you made it that. You were a nice one. <laughs> yeah. uh, didn't make it in. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the work you've done over the last uh, few weeks? Yeah, we've been Pete Berman and uh, Grady Road and doing a couple of small test projects on some of the stuff that we picked up this year about how to deal with the stormwater runoff. Uh, the paving on Plot Road. In, in the works, I guess, according to what I've been told by the painting guy at it 10 minutes ago. Uh, and there's a different outfit that's going to be checking into the library and we wrote the past job that we had on an emergency wash because Hutchins doesn't feel like we might not have time to do it. Mm -hmm. So, what's that library road or library? The library parking lot, and there's a uh, small walkway behind it. Okay. Okay. And we went up to uh, Fox Lot to look at a uh, relatively large project for the grants and aid uh, that we get as part of the MRGP, the Municipal Road General Permit Available Funds. Um, looking at Fox Lot, we detailed. Um, some of the work that Brian Krause had looked at before he left that we'll finish up for the current year's plan. And uh, we can at the same time uh, engage with the funds for next year uh, so that we can, when we were looking at it, it looked like we had enough money to gather a lot of the water farther up the hill, uh, but we're going to need to spend some of next year's money in order to properly dispose of that water. Uh, so that'll be a project that spends that spans uh, two fund years that will complete with one deployment. Okay. And I've already secured the escalator for the month for that project. 
and then all in the oversized edge stone to at the start file so we can get around the construction part of the so we'll be ahead of 15, it. Yeah. But uh, I understand you're looking to do some ditching up on French Hill. We are. You're having some issues. With one resident. Uh, but we're going to start on the off side of the road to do the rest of the project and hopefully come back to that. Mm -hmm. Don't uh, hesitate to reach out if you're having issues. Yeah, I mean, me and Brian talked, and I think he's in the process of doing that with certain sort of Attorney to make sure where we. Yeah, I wanted to. There's been the threat of a lawsuit, so I at least wanted to inform our attorney and mm -hmm. make sure that we were okay. doing that and kind of work with the guys to make sure that we stay within our right of way and that we're carefully planning so that we uh, don't overstep it. Perfect. I just want to make sure it's clear you don't have to shoulder it all. No. Okay. Uh, anyone have any questions for Jason? Oh, thank you, Jason. Thanks for filling in in a difficult time. No problem. Uh, Eric, you're up next. Okay, uh, so uh, update from the Rachel Justice Committee. Um, we got exactly zero entries for the Rachel Justice Contest. Which I think I already explained. I took responsibility for that, and then the idea of doing it over the summer was probably poorly planned. As I thought, hundreds of kids would show up for summer school, but it was dozens. Uh, and so we're going to postpone it. We're going to, when I get back into the school building on uh, in August and September, I'll talk to the teachers there about what's the best way to roll that out, and then we'll relaunch it with a new deadline and hopefully have a lot more participation. Um, we plan some uh, workshops being run by the Vermont Human Rights Commission for the end of September and I think September 30th and October 2nd. Um, more official report coming on those. Uh, we've started to initiate some fundraising, you know, soliciting some donations and made a pro portfolio post. And I tried to contact Sophia before I came here. There were some other ideas that came up in the meeting that we haven't committed yet, but I want to highlight it. But I don't. I don't have my, my notes and I'm like talk to her before I said anything, but what we I think we're gonna be able to successfully get what we need for the the progress pride flag and also the, the workshops before that run. So but we have already raised a little bit of money for some personal donations. Um, I don't know if I was gonna ask Sophie about that too. She didn't do it, and then uh, at our last meeting we uh uh interviewed uh candidates for two point to recommend for appointment to which Justice Committee and uh we're uh recommending Jeff Bickford and Jackie Stan to be the new firm. Any questions? I think that's all we got. Anybody got any questions for her? Um at the last time you were here and thanks for being here. Um sure. there was some public comments that uh, folks who wanted to participate um, weren't showing up because they didn't feel welcome and they were afraid that they were going to be uh, ridiculed if they, if they spoke. I'm just wondering if that came up at all in the, the meeting, and if so, how did that go? I mean, since that was part of the last time I was here, I, I personally reached out to all the individuals to make comments. So I talked to them. Um, right. I think in some cases successfully, and in other cases it's not their response. <laughs> I know it's on everybody's minds in the committee that we make sure that you know we had we had two new folks show up three actually at the last meeting that just showed up and, and attended and I, I think it went pretty smoothly you know I think uh, you know reputation is a hard thing to shake but I think all the meetings that I've had we've had since. The one you asked, and I think they've been pretty smooth. I and mean, everyone who sits there has been able to speak their piece without, you know, um, any kind of pushback. And, you know, I think it's really important that, you know, the biggest part, one of the big parts of this is that conversations happen and that people are able to express a diversity of opinions. Um, and I think from what we've seen both in this room and in our meetings, that's, that's what's happening. 
and if people still think it's not happening, and you know, we once again encourage them to attend, but that, that hasn't been the reality for the last you know four or five months that I get called. Good for us. Okay. So, something that we've heard publicly. So I yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I, I think we, we just saw the time. I think, you know, we saw the Central and Sophia and I wrote to Nancy Citizen, which attempted to address that. And, you know, it's all the conversations that I have people in the community, not just people I know, but complete strangers. You know, I don't know. I want to hear what they have to say. I, you know, I make those posts on our front porch forum, and every once in a while I get a couple of emails, you know, through that. Or, you know, people who you know, aren't like minded to me, and I respond back to them and tell them I want to hear what they have to say and help them show up. And I get an earful and respectfully disagree and move on. So that's that's what we're trying to do, and it's what we're doing one, uh, one conversation at a time. Thanks. Further comments, questions, more time. Uh -huh. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Mary, you're on the agenda, but not until 7.35, because it's identified as a particular time. We'll skip over and come back at 7.35. Uh, Brian, we'll give you your report. Racial Justice Committee appointment. Well, as Eric said, uh, the Racial Justice Committee has recommended uh, Jeff Pickford and Jackie Stanton or appointments to fill the two vacancies. Uh, I know that uh, Kyle News was one of the other candidates she had withdrawn, and Shane Spence was also one of the candidates. And there were two other candidates as well. There were, and I'm sorry, I don't remember. I think John might have been one of yep. them. And Lynn. I didn't see much of text from this, but okay. they, they did not. They were not, they did not tend to, to be more than the same Okay. And Jack probably withdrew her. Yes. So, how would the board like to approach us as a slate or as individually? Individually. Okay. That's everyone's in agreement on that. So, I'll take nominations for the first position. We have a suggestion of two candidates. So Jeff, Jeff Victor is the first one, right? Yep. I uh, nominate Jeff Victor for the, the position on the racial justice. The nomination for Jeff Victor for the first position. Is there any other nominations? No. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, for the second position, is there any nominations? <clears throat> Take no nominations. I'm assuming that uh, the second candidate will not be as suggested going forward. And if that's what I'm hearing, then we would ask that you uh, reopen that. Go for a second candidate. Why? Because I've got no nominations. Can I? I guess if we're going to try to find a qualified nominee for the board of our session to know why the one of the two we recommend, one of the ones we recommended wasn't accepted. Otherwise, we could just be this for us. Okay. Well, well I, I can't speak for everybody, but I'll speak for myself. I have a really hard time with um, a couple of things. I have a really hard time with. Um, listening to people but listening to the people to people is not the same thing as valuing what they're saying and engaging with what they're saying um so <clears throat> i've seen that at a number with a number of people uh and our last select board meeting around this topic was one of those examples um and I have a really big problem with, with the use of the word I all the time. Like, I feel like there's a lot of needing to be right uh, and not a lot of wanting to compromise. And I really just have trouble swallowing that. Um, and I'll tell you that I 
have been on and off the fence about this nomination and uh, just decided before I walked in the door, to be completely honest with you. And I, it is about, it is about the, um, who is right to think. Um, it bothers me a lot. Like we are one community and we should be paid this one. And many people disagree with me, <laughs> thinking that we, there's a lot of division and that's the way it needs to be. I don't agree. I think that there does not need to be. Uh, and I would like to have C nominees who are about um, not just engaging, but not needing to be ready. So that's my request. Do other board members want to share your, your reasons or thoughts? I feel like I've worked hard to express myself when it comes to the work and, and mission of this committee. Um, and um, just in general, I'm, I'm not seeing that the committee has really addressed the, the concerns that I've raised. Um, just um, so I'll let my previous words speak, to, speak for themselves. Right. Yeah. Go ahead, Eric. Thank you. Uh, since the meeting that you attended last, where I think there were a lot of issues, I kind of feel like we've got to address the year concerns. So I'm not sure what, what we need. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Future disposition of Fox Cemetery and existing trust. So David Marvin has been in touch and would like the town to consider taking over administration for the trust fund uh, that, that exists for the Fox Cemetery. The uh, management fees with Link's Merchants Bank, uh, where he's got it located right now, the management fees are increasing pretty dramatically and he doesn't really have next set lined up, he'd like the town to become more active in it. This is also a good opportunity for us to make arrangements since that he is, is currently serving as uh, kind of management for the cemetery where we might be able to ha handle an order, uh, a uh, orderly <laughs> transition, unlike what we had with Evergreen Ledge. Yeah. So I'd recommend that we get our attorney involved and make the arrangements to take over Management of Fox Cemetery. <laughs> Board members' thoughts? Somebody needs to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's killing it. Uh, yep. Let's start the work. In our <laughs> uh, unification gift agreement. All right. So we've got uh, a couple members of the beautification committee that are here to present on this, but the uh, short kind of preliminary explanation on this. Uh, Greg Taper is willing to make a gift of support for an art project uh, for a piece called the World Cow, World Cow uh, by Vermont artist DJ Bear. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to look at some of these examples, but it's a cow with spots made up to look like the map of the globe. Um, this would be out on the rail trail along, uh, along one of the, the buildings up there. The gift agreement would be that you know we will execute this, we'll put the thing up, and we'll maintain it, uh, and Greg will make sure that the, the space is available. Any questions? Members, did you want to go ahead? Sure. Can we just speak from here? Yeah, you can. Oh, okay. And so I'm I'm Blair Watson. This is John and Gary Watson. Um, so where we are is we're in the process of um, conversation with Mr. Catro about uh, getting that uh, anything up. Um, and so the gift agreement, what we're asking is the, the board to authorize Brian Story to sign it when we have the agreement finalized. Um, Mr. Catro has been busy, so we're <laughs> still in conversations. Um, so uh, to get his feedback on that document and uh, and then to finalize it, but it's pretty much where it's going to be. And so we're just asking that when we get to that point, um, Brian can sign that. Um, 
acknowledging the, the agreements and the commitments in that document uh, because the, the, uh, the, uh, the painter has us penciled in for September and he paints these around the world. And so <laughs> we're heavy on his calendar and soon and before winter. Um, it's sort of a little bit of urgency there. That's why we're kind of moving uh, here before we lead our conversation with Mr. Pedro. But that's where we are. And so that's what we're asking for with the, uh, with the agreement tonight. And I'm sorry I didn't get back to you with this comment earlier, but uh, do you have a copy in front of you? Or uh, yeah. uh, the bottom of the first page on the installation schedule says that the pledge payment number one is one million dollars following uh, the project approval and ground. We're just waiting. Yeah. That's a typo. So. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'll be needed. <laughs> yeah, uh, other than that, it, it, it looks good to me. Yeah, and there's you know, a little bit of language where I add specifying the building. I mean, we always put it, just put it in here. So the agreement's just to set parameters as to how long it's going to be up and what Mr. Pedro can expect from us and you know, what we can expect from him as far as keeping the thing on the wall and things like that. Just so there's yeah. restrictions, limitations of what we're doing. Um, just to get into some of the technicality, uh, Matt brings up a good point of if this is going to be a monetary contract, it probably shouldn't be between the committee, it should be between the board. So if they want to change that to uh, requiring the signature of the select board, or the chair, and then uh, be with right. It's okay to keep the Kyle as the beautification chair in addition to the select board, though. Like yeah, nice yeah I mean, it has no no problem with that. But whenever it's there's a uh, monetary uh, exchange or contract, it should really be the select board. Yeah, but that's a good point too. Pat. So <clears throat> if we could have that added. I mean, the board can approve it tonight, but at some point we have it modified. Maybe you won't be so generous with your million dollar <laughs> yeah. um, and have the signature for a select board or the chair, depending on what the board approves. Is there anything in terms of what, uh, in terms of, um, like there's no copyright considerations or maintenance right this will be painted over after a certain amount of time is that what you were well suggesting i think it's a little bit yeah we're not really sure yet on whether you know we'll see what happens like what we can derive from this creation and if it's if it's something that people flock to or we can create things from it um maybe it won't be temporary maybe we can use it for Long, longer, I don't know. Well, you know, it's it's a six years is what we have in here. I think um, uh, Mr. Pedro and Kyle discussed that part of it, I think. Um, but, you know, it's private property, so it's donating the use of that property. So at the end of the agreement, we could extend or he wants to paint the building with. Right. <laughs> but uh, so that's kind of where that is. I would move to um, allow for Eric to sign on behalf of the board um, up to $500 funding through the town, um, right? Yes, and that's from our regular Sorry, 500, that's from the, okay. Um, on behalf of the beautification committee for the World Cow Art installation. The motion, do we have a second? Second. The motion and second. Any more discussion? I just think we should thank Greg for the donation by giving him the cow and the fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was the same thing. I'm glad you brought that up, Matt. You must have some place over there we'll that you can, there you go, that you can make a little like an alcove or something to set you it in. You guys are joking, but seriously, you have this like, big cow mural that people are coming to, and then I have a cow that sits and sit on take pictures. Like, right. this. Yeah. We need to get it over there. Yeah, I'll mark that. Greg, would you agree to that, Cal? Well, let me think. Yeah. Let's <laughs> 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 
I have a question. Can I ask? Yes, sure. Sure. Are you guys get that motion there. The motion's on the floor, but we're open for a discussion. Yeah. Right now. So I think some people, including me, actually may want to know the significance of this. Mira, what, what does it mean? Right. So this artist, um, DJ Barry, he, he paints these cows all around the world. It's always the same cow. <laughs> and the idea is to promote unity and world peace. Um, by the, the cow spots of like the globe, yeah. and so um, he he goes and he paints them where he is welcome to paint them and to promote it. And then um, part of his funding is he gives a gift to the local uh, to a local charity that Harold selects. So we selected it as promise, of course, to, to receive that gift. Um, but the idea is just to paint these cows, uh, promoting unity, and, and to draw people to the places where they're painted. So we hope there'll be a tourist, tourism element uh, right there on the rail trail. Uh, it could be a nice photo op. Um, and and Facebook, yeah. stuff like that. And we just feel like the great, you know, beautification town uh, project that everybody can kind of enjoy the cow and kind of giggle and take too serious. And, and it's yeah. not just simply around the world, it's the continents, right? Yeah, right. it's the continents. So it's the continents across the cow. Okay. The cow is slow. Oh, yeah. The cow is slow. <laughs> so it relates unity. We're all the same cow. Yeah, that's what it looks like. I love it personally. And I went check out the website and it truly is all over the world. Like it is in South America to Africa, yeah. to the Middle East, it's truly everywhere. Yeah, so it's, it's yeah. really a gift that this radar around the year and draw for us this thing that could bring a lot of tourism and a lot of Unity to our town. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, any further discussion? No. All those in favor, simply saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you, Greg. Thank you. For your very generous uh, donation. Just a little song on the bill. It does help the unity in our town, I know, for. Okay, so spot you don't have to paint too. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we'll give you the cow to model. <laughs> we can probably figure it out. <laughs> give it the cane inside there. And, sit on it. <laughs> and you had to put a motor on it then. Yeah. Is the cow solid? No. Is it heavy? Uh, I don't know. You can let us know. Yeah. Okay, Mary, uh, <laughs> if you're ready, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, uh, my name is Mary Fear. This is my husband, Bruce Fear. And in 2015, we um, sold the property in front of what was to be Florence and Mia's house just before the covered bridge. Um, on School Street. We sold that to the town via many funding sources, but the turned over to the town um, for upkeep uh, and ongoing maintenance. My concern is that we have not seen the upkeep and ongoing maintenance. Um, it was the family's understanding when it was um, turned over to the town that uh, it would be the land would be maintained and up and, and kept up uh, by either brush hogging or mowing, uh, trimming little shrubs to trees. I don't know the specifics, and it was more of a general understanding. And um, it was actually turned over to the town as Beard Recreation Park. And, and every person I talked to says that, oh, we need to be in the swimming pool. And I said, well, oh, it's actually the view of recreation park. And because it's not maintained, you see a little footpath down to the river, people are just coming to do a swimming hole. The family gave um, two picnic tables and a, a little charcoal grill, like you see in the state parks for people to grill, have a picnic. The field was supposed to be maintained so kids could run around up there instead of just. You know, if they wanted the parents wanted them to come up off from the beach and have supper, some people some place for them to run. Um, because of the tick population, no one's going to let their children. I don't even want to walk the narrow path because until they made the accessible 
trail and mowed that, the narrow pathway had a lot of grass that was growing up that, you know, I was always worried about the tips. Um, so on the street side, on the road side, all those trees that have grown up and the big tall weeds that are by the walkway, which I tried to pull one year, but there's a little, it was a little bit too much for me. Um, um, I did weed the steps a few times, but um, it's really not noticeable that there's anything there until you get to the park and not see the footpath. So our concern is that it's not being maintained and, and kept up as it was indicated to us that it would be. And so I'm just bringing it up. Yeah. I know probably our level of involvement has been brush hogging it or mowing it a couple times a year. Do you think that our mowing service would be able to take over that? I think they would. Okay. So but right now you need more than just mowing. Does that whole side hill yeah. going up? Yeah, it's, it's trees now. It's a little yeah, that needs to be all cut down, so you've got to view down to the park area. So you need and, to see this park area. And if, if those trees are cut down and uh, prepared, there's it's a lot of fill that comes off from side roads and streets. They can be dumped yeah. there, and that whole side bankment can be filled in and seeded and mowed, taken mm -hmm. care of, where you can't do it right now. Go ahead. Um, is that area under the management of the Conservation Commission? It's, no. it, it's turned over to the town. The town of Johnson is in charge of the Rio Recreation Park. The Conservation Commission goes in a committee, goes in and does uh, projects, and they just recently did a very nice handicapped walkway. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it was down down toward the picnic table area, which isn't we black around at all. Um, as far as maintaining it, it is responsibility of the town. But conservation, as Mary indicated, has been some project. Yeah. Um, what what's the board's thoughts? Uh, should we approach our mooring service and see if they would take this on as part of their contract? I don't see why not. You know, they they do light maintenance, I'm sure. You know, they could clean up some of the bigger stuff. And why don't we just ask them? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, has the Conservation Commission given any input, or have you talked to Wells Fargo if you want the Conservation Commission about this? Or Brian? Uh, Brian, we have Brian, and we also had a couple of conversations. I've, I've approached, I have very recently approached the, con the Conservation Commission about. Mm -hmm. You know, that we, we're going to have this discussion tonight. Um, I think that I think we should include them in our conversations about increased maintenance there, but I think that they would also support more maintenance than we're doing right now, and that the future plan would hopefully be something that the Conservation Commission supports and the Beard family supports. Well, it's really only asking for mowing and visibility that there's even a park there. Um, yeah. And that's, I, that's I think that, I, I, you know, and uh, Lois is, is uh, we, we have talked, um, and we've talked about the projects they've done and stuff, and we've talked about the fact that this was not this year, it was the fourth this year. And uh, uh, there's, I, I don't see the, to me, there wasn't any issue. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any conflict there. I think that we can come up with a plan that will, you know, serve everyone. Great. Good. So if you come back and get after us if we're not doing it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody got any further comments on that? No. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Burn quilt donation. <coughs> All right, so we have uh, a barn quilt panel uh, that's been offered for display at the end of the powerhouse bridge. That's just on the hundred C side. Uh, which side were you envisioning? So the lot was displaced 
on the end of Powerhouse Bridge facing School Street, as opposed to 100 C. Um, the barn that was donated to the beautification committee by Larraway School. The committee unanimously voted to accept the donation, um, recognizing that we needed to gain the permission of the town before erecting the thing. So, would you consider letting us put this up on the Powerhouse Bridge? Whereabouts up in the peak Yeah, we're thinking at the top. So as you as you would enter into it from School Street, um, at the very top, hopefully not as easily as The material will be heavy, and right, and it, and it'll be pretty pretty padded onto the roof. So we're not really worried about the falling or anything. Yeah, maybe, but you have to really get yourself up there and in trouble. So. Somebody stole the powerhouse bridge sign on the top. <laughs> but I hope it, yeah, I hope it stays. What's more thoughts there? There's nothing wrong with the aesthetics, but I think a covered bridge should be just a covered bridge. I like the boat. Very nice touch. Mary? I was just thinking just off the top of my head, it's not because of kind of the river line. Um, what about in the back on the uh, on the, in the park area on the back of the back houses on that big uh, that would make that kind of stand out and pretty draw attention down maybe toward the park area. So um, I'm not sure. No, I don't know where the but um, I don't, and I can't think of the side of that boxes are open up. Is it the side facing the river or the I think river? it is. Facing the river. So in the back where it's facing the road, yeah. that, that one would look there if you don't go over the bridge idea. Yeah. <clears throat> it's beautiful. Board number five. <coughs> Click it and we pass it. Thank you. I like it. Everybody likes it now. Where yeah. do you like it? <laughs> I don't really get on the bridge. I like it on the bridge. And I'm just curious when it does, at some point, it will start to wear. Like, I assume as beautification, you don't want it to wear. <laughs> so you'll take care of letting us know as a community that we should probably take ownership to that it needs to come down. And the other question is, do you need help putting it up, or is that something that you're attending? Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we should put it up. We should not have a liability. Yeah, we could. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit of a loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you so moved? So moved. We have a motion to put it uh, book donated on Tower Hill Bridge. We have a second. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Yeah, I was just wondering, like, the, like if it would be appropriate if it has to like credit their way in some way for the art, like it's in the way up there, and then like you can like, really see it, but I don't know that. Yeah. There we go. So we put some sort of black on the on the cover bridge. Yeah. Saying, you know, where the bar is, where the boat from. You know, I agree. Any other discussion? None. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Take it, give it to our public works department. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Seth, I think you're up next. Thank you. Thank you. What mitigation? Yep. Yeah. Um, thank you for uh, time to talk about this. Um, so, those of you who were on the board back in 2019, I think it was one of the meetings right before the uh, quarantine happened for the first time um, in December of 2019. 
Um, we reviewed some hydraulic modeling and flood evaluation that we had done uh, for the guy on the main stem uh, in, in the village of Johnson. Um, I'm here to talk about a possible uh, follow up, um, which is a potential um, acquisition and floodplain restoration um, with a program that's currently under development for long emergency management. Um, so Vermont Emergency Management is currently in the process of developing a grant program that is aimed at some of the gaps in um, FEMA funding. Uh, just a caveat as we go through uh, tonight, that program is still under development. So the answer to some important questions like match is going to be, I don't know, uh, but I will let you know as soon as they do. Um, so right, right now, just want to talk about the um, the concept, so um, we can continue or not continue um, discussions um, with the property owner and discussions about possible technical assistance to uh, you know get more information. Um, so the potential project is acquisition of a Holmes Meadow and possible um, floodplain restoration of. Uh, the Holmes Meadow. The Holmes Meadow, those of you have the, the memo, is the um, point on the bend in the river, um, right, right down here, um, kind of right where the, the Luma comes up against Route 15. Um, it's one of the areas that uh, floods during the mod moderate stages, one of the areas that's closer to the ice jam. I think Ryan's also where a lot of the ice accumulated in that general vicinity. Yeah. Roughly. Generally, it was, it was a little farther back. Right. A little bit farther back, and uh, when we had to access it, it turned out to be easier to access it from the opposite side of the river from yeah. uh, Holmes Meadow. Yeah. But, okay. um, but it was in that vicinity. That, that's a definitely you know, a, a good area to monitor for uh, floodplain preservation. Yeah. And, and so because it's kind of at this point where there's a sharp end in the river, there's also close to the, the confluence. Um, the modeling showed that this was an area for both um, flood levels and also velocity that had the potential to uh, reduce flooding if you were to do some target floodplain restoration. So that the first piece of that will be uh, acquiring um, the property. Um, what I've laid out in the acquisition piece of the memo are the rules for a FEMA buyout. Again, this. The, the, the Vermont emergency management could be different, but assuming it's very similar, um, the FEMA buyout program um, bases what they'll pay for acquisition on fair market value of the property. Um, they will, as part of the grant, fund an appraiser. Um, what that means is for the grant application, you kind of have to guess at you know, using the, or I wouldn't say guess, estimate using the town appraised value. And usually what they do for that case if there hasn't been a professional appraisal and you know a property specific professional appraisal is use 120% of the list of car value for the purpose of the application and then adjust up and down, up or down based on the um, the appraisal uh, once the appraisal is complete. Um, the floodplain restoration uh, component. Um, just to explain what that means, um, the, the Lamoille is um, what's called incised, which means it's basically cut down in the channel over you know, a few hundred years. And so it doesn't spill out into um, the floodplain as often as it would in a purely natural condition. Um, and of course, the village of Johnson is never going to revert to a purely natural condition. Um, so what that means is targeted areas that are undeveloped, if you can. Um, sort of target the, uh, the, the, the widening of the floodplain that gives the river an opportunity to slow down and spread out in the smaller, more moderate sized storms. Um, so that both slows down the water, it lowers the level. Um, and something really important in this setting is it also means debris and sediment and ice can be dropped where it's, it's low. So potentially making it some more volume can get through the channel. Um, so an example of what that looks like in the village of, of Jeffersonville, I provided an image of a small floodplain restoration project under the Greenway Trail, um, which is right next to the park and ride on Route 15. 
Um, so during a non uh, flood stage event, that's, that's dry land, um, but it's lower than the adjacent grade. And what that means is in um, smaller storm events, um, the water spills over, uh, but it's contained. So in this case, the, the edge of the floodplain is, is stabilized with a mix of roof drop and, and vegetation. Um, the, the difference being though that the water in that area is moving a lot more slowly than the water uh, in the channel. And so that means ice, sediment, debris um, all gets dropped down and it also takes some pressure off of it. In, in this case, the banks, um, you know, along the village, and in your case, that, that other bank along 15, um, we would still need to do to evaluate exactly sort of how much reduction there would still need to be um, more, you know, more advanced modeling done um, just to confirm that does have a meaningful reduction. Um, so the, the three items for the select board, if, if there's any desire in doing this further, um, that, that it will be continuing discussing with the property owner, whether that arrangement that I talked about um, works for them. Um, an important question for LCPC is we either directly or through BEM um, do have the ability to access technical assistance funds to do more of the modeling to determine sort of what the extent of a flood mitigation of a floodplain cut would need to be. Um, but that's limited, so I only want to use that in locations where the community actually wants to pursue it. Um, if you say no, my feelings won't be hurt and I'll take the, the money elsewhere. Um, but if you want to pursue that, given the um, given the um, issues that Johnson has had in the past with flooding and ice jam, I've sort of been sitting on a, a bit of that for you guys. Um, and then, of course, keep monitoring the modern emergency management program rules so that I can give you information about the match requirement and application timeline. Because I know the answer will likely depend in part on that question of what the cost is paying for the counties. Uh, I know the majority of your focus here is on flooding. Uh, and I'm wondering, are you working with the Army Corps of Engineers? That have, we were selected as part of the, I believe it's a silver jacket program. And they were supposed to come in this summer and look at ways of mitigating ice jam. They're focused on you know, ice jam, but I think there could be value in the two working together, making sure uh, what benefits one might benefit both, I guess. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, they, they're, they're also utilizing our model uh, for that project. Um, I definitely, part of, if we were to pursue this, you know, doing the next step, reaching out to them and making sure the two projects talk to, to each other would be really important. You know, we don't agree with that. Otherwise, I, personally speaking, I think it's of value and important because we've had so many uh, flooded events in Johnson. What's the board's uh, thoughts on? Well, I just want to make sure it's not some kind of a work, make work project. And that uh, it's actually going to do something. And uh, how much modification do they, would they plan on doing on the Holmes Meadows? Are they going to just leave them just the way they are? Or you talked about it's kind of lifted up. Are they going to be kind of cut down a little bit so the water can get into there faster or what? What's the whole process behind this? That's a good question. And so the um, the initial analysis we did, which was really rough, was kind of keep it as is, um, lower it to the um, 10 year storm level and then lower it to the uh, five year storm level. And it, it really depends um, which, so, so that that the answer to that question would need to be further analyzed in this next step of it. Um, it because the you know the ten year isn't getting it down to the ten year isn't that much of a reduction. Getting it down to the five year would be some areas you know cutting down uh, quite a bit, um, and that would need to be evaluated against the you know um, how much flood reduction you get to. Um, how much cost it does to excavate that material. 
Well, you know, I'm no engineer, but it's not a very big space. And I can't see it's going to amount to a whole lot, to tell you the truth. And uh, if there's not going to be any kind of a change to the land down there, it's obvious that nobody's ever going to build there anyway. So yeah. why should anybody want to pay for that? Yeah. So I think that we found um, the reduction in the initial model in the, um, the volume, or excuse me, the, the sort of flood level was um, you know, a, a couple of inches, but the big reduction was the slowing of the water. Um, that was the, the protection was more from the velocity in this case, um, and that would be similar to the, um, the, the case in, in Jefferson. So it may, you know, um, it, it may be that. So I'm a planner, which means I want to keep evaluating everything until I can't evaluate it anymore. Well, you want to do that until the money runs out. Um, well, I. I can make the money never run out if you want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. And a lot of times, we, everybody ends up studying stuff to death. You know. Yeah. I, I've seen big projects for this for three hundred thousand dollars were spent mm -hmm. on it for kind of a little, you know, for nothing. Really. And I just want to make sure that any money that's spent is actually good money. It's actually going to do something. Yeah. Oh, I do too. I only have. The total of that technical assistance money about fifty thousand dollars, and there's a lot of villages along the main stem of flood. So I definitely want to use the tip um, about the things that make sense. Um, I have a similar question as Mike, just maybe worded slightly differently, maybe nicer. Oh, oh good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with um, yours. Uh, but my question is, like, what would the impact be? Like, so if we're talking about if we did do this and we did reduce yeah. it to a five-year. What would the impact? So in the past, I don't know, 10 flood events in Johnson could be plenty to choose from. What would the impact of those flood events be? So to give you a to give you the answer to that, um, in the detail that you're 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 asking, we would need to do this next step of, yeah. um, of evaluation. I, I can say that you know um, a, a inch or two reduction. On a road overtopping can be you know, can be meaningful, um, and certainly at the you know the wastewater treatment plant that can be very meaningful. But to give you the number of sort of you know uh, how much you know savings in terms of property protection or reductions in damages, um, we have not done enough of the model to do that yet. Um, and you're talking about you know, five to ten thousand dollars of modeling that. Hundreds of thousands, um, of course. I, I don't have hundreds of thousands. Um, well, if it ever gets to that point and they do a lot of digging down there and they find a lot of good gravel, the town wants that. <laughs> if, if the <laughs> town, I, I mean, if the town is the, um, the owner, um, because if you did the acquisition, you would be there, the material would become yours. Um, and you could do with it as you, as you please. Um, there might possibly be a silver lining in this whole thing. It, it, yeah, I mean, it could be, you know, river run gravel down there. It is at the bank of a river. That, that um, this isn't the EM, so I don't, or this isn't FEMA, so I don't have to worry about salvage. If this were FEMA, I'd be getting worried about FEMA calling that salvage. I think we're not really going to make it crazy. What do they call it? Um, that was a bad joke that only made sense to me. When you do a <laughs> <laughs> That's about what I think. When, when you do a That's buyout, why I want you to say it again. Yeah. A little clear. When you do a buyout, anything in the property that you salvage has to be redu reduced from the buyout. So, for example, the buyout we did in Cambridge had some old sort of hand that we were paying in the property and we wanted to keep it because it was a family heirloom that FEMA said, well, if you keep it, you have to subtract the value of it from the amount they get from the property acquisition, um, which, you know, from a historic preservation standpoint, is weird. Um, I'm pretty sure they won't say that about gravel. But anyway, that's one of the reasons Vermont Emergency Management is trying to pilot the program. So we don't have those kinds of things. The other question I have, sorry, just one more question. Is this abuts the old talk mines and old mill park? And I don't know if there's any concern about that or not, but I just want to throw it out there. 
This isn't part of our stuff now, is it? It's a but. Oh, uh, but it was not part of it. It's not part of it. Correct. Yeah. So it may make sense. I'll talk to the engineers about this for both the um, reason that Mike was talking about, as well as that question about you know, arsenic and such, to do some geotechnical borings just to make sure there's not you know, a pile of top or arsenic buried down there, because you definitely wouldn't want to take ownership for that. Um, but it may be possible also to evaluate the, you know, the material and how gravelly it is and whether there'd be value that there. Um, again, I, I, I need to speak to an engineer about whether that makes sense to do, um, but it's possible that it does. Do you have any, of course, it would take more modeling, but if we lower the floodplain to a five year floodplain, normally speaking, every five years we get sediment by slowing the water down, right? So yeah. Or are we on a 20 year maintenance package with this? If we get sediment and sediment and sediment, you're out of your elevation, right? Right. So, um, I can ask them about the accumulation of sediment as well. Um, one of the things that in the, um, you know, these sites is you're tending to get more of the, the fine settled uh, sediments um, rather than the, the coarse ones because they, you know, the, the fines drop when the, when the waters are moving more slowly. Um, and those are also the ones that the, the settlers that carry the, um, the phosphorus. So from a water quality, reducing the amount of um, phosphorus in the watershed. Um, you know, there's a there's a benefit there. Uh, the, the cleanup, how often does it need to be cleaned out to prevent the, um, you know, the, the, the filling in? You know, basically, um, is a good question I can ask the, the engineer as well of, of what cleanup would have to be and how often to keep the benefits there. Question maybe for these two over here. Um, does this do you see how this might you've been doing a lot of planning around recreation in that general area? Did this have any impact at all on the plants that you've been looking at or thinking about? Well, the question would be if they are uh, if this arrangement would bring restrictions on use low low impact recreation use like boat launch, uh, swimming, fishing. Um, so again, going back to a, a FEMA acquisition buyout, so it would be you know, that would be a lot of those, those are kind of, you know, low impact recreation is allowed under those rules. Um, I, I think it's unlikely that Vermont Emergency Management Group would be more restrictive of that, but until I see it writing, you know, I, I have to give you that. Yeah. Well, that's your direction, I'll put it across the way, but I'm not there. Well, I, I don't get that. It's, it's yeah, 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 I didn't know where it was, but it was not there. No. It's down further between the resources. As far as uh, material, we're going to have to reclaim our current gravel pit at some point. We'll have to cover that in the material. Yeah, I mean, we could use it. It makes sense. And the travel rate part of that, and then that travel rate part. Yeah. You could, I mean, Cambridge stockpile the material for from yeah. that for the plant house. So, yeah. um, Seth, I was wondering, yeah. are there other places in town that would have a similar level of impacts to this program, this project? And I have a question. <laughs> sure. So, um, the modeling that we looked at, um, identified a couple of areas um kind of starting at the you know that end of town moving this way um there's the uh, field next to the MSI gravel pit that was one one area um the next um you know across across the river from here actually at the the, um, the old mobile home park in the area that you used, used as the um the, the state park it was another area, and that obviously is currently being used. So, um, um, and again, this was you know engineers find places, and then we as planners and we as the select board think about it from the impacts. Um, this was a, this was another one, um, another one which I'm not suggesting um, though is the 
you know, basically completely reorganizing the sterling market property. So the buildings up against the road and the parking lot as well, which I don't have $10 million spent either to you or they. Um, then continuing down um, the river, um, a few areas around Manchester, um, close to the, the riverside, not the, um, the mill part, you know, the, the, the opposite side of River Road. Um, and then we did not go much farther um, than that on the main stem, and we didn't really go past the um, Route 15 bridge on the Guyana. I think there could be value at some point to extending the modeling up, up the Guyana through, through the rest of the village and evaluating some of these areas, but it's just not something we have the, the resources to do um, yet. Um, so that. And so my second question is, uh, in keeping with all the plans that uh, you know pertain to recreation down there, is this one that could be done as a recreational mitigation project where there is some focus into creating, um, you know, as we was talking about, some light use uh, for both some kayaks and stuff, and also maybe some swimming and, and stuff like that in that area? Uh, yeah, again, I think that um, That would be allowed under the FEMA rules, and um, I'm presuming that um, the EM will be um, no more restrictive on recreation than, than FEMA. Um, it is also something that, with our technical assistance funds, if the town wants that to be kind of included, of like scoping out river access or swimming access, is something we could ask them to do as well. Because, you know that we were doing a similar project in Wolf at um, at a fish and wildlife site, and that's the coordination of river access is one of them. So it's something that can be can be rolled in if if the town wants that to happen. Yeah, and we can do some birds one stone too. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. No problem. I got a question. That's right on the corner now. It is. Yeah, it would be this area. When we were digging out all that ice. That's further down, Greg. Yeah, I know, but I wonder if that's where it started. You know, right on that corner, that ice isn't going to go around that corner. Yeah. It's going to bunch up right there. It's going to hit that out of the bank. Be just like a domino. It's not going to help. There's this other guy. Uh, Guy on the problem there is this bridge right down, you know, walking mm -hmm. in the water, and I think everybody found it. Right. Right. So I'm trying to think when we took all that ice out, we went down and back of the, uh, well, we did some on the corner over here, and then uh, back of the uh, mobile home car, we moved a lot of that. And uh, I don't think we really looked much past that corner, but I gotta wonder if that's where that started. So my question would be, do you think that if it was cut down some, that that ice would spill out into there? The January floods on it, Yeah. You'll get out of flood. So yes. if, if I can, Greg, I, the first place we went and tried to uh, excavate out of the river yeah. was from the Holmes Meadow. Uh, but when we tried there, as I recall, we, it was too weak. We couldn't find a place to stage the excavator and be able to reach the ice. The idea would be that if we could lower this a little bit, we might capture some of the ice on this side of the river rather than pushing it all out uh, to the opposite bank. So it theoretically, if more of the ice drops on this side, especially in this field, once this field is once at least part of this field is lowered a little bit. Um, you know, we might be able to reduce the the impact of the, the total ice cap. I think so on that, especially on that corner. Yeah. Yeah. How, how much higher is that than the the high 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 water level up there? Trying to remember exactly what it says. It's um, you know, right now it I think isn't accessed until like a. A bigger than 10 year storm. Um, but I, I'd have to look back and get at the cross sections to get you the actual height. But it's. You drove across that field 
one of your excavators and there was no water or ice back yeah. up into yeah. it. Yeah, so especially on that corner, if you're gonna get a, a jam or a, you know a funnel attack, that that would be the place that you're gonna have to if you could spill some of that ice over. Yeah. You know, it might it might help. But eventually I think it's my opinion is that corn is probably that river is gonna go straight. It, it eventually probably will. Yeah, yeah especially that's just the way it works. Yeah. Mother Nature wants to go flat and straight on mm -hmm. So you might be doing yourself a favor anyway. <laughs> yeah, that, that, so, that, some of those sediments down the chamber. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like it when you say something. <laughs> um, Seth, when you say the next test would be to evaluate and extend um, extend the floodplain. And the likely cost of implementation may be available through technical assistance funds. Um, what does that mean? Does that mean that we would need to apply for, you would need to apply for a grant, we would need to apply for a grant? What does that mean? Um, so at the moment, um, both LCPC and Vermont Emergency Management have actually already applied for and received grants with technical assistance funds. Um, so there's not an application for that. It would just be you all saying, yes, go forth and, and use those. Um, what I would be doing um, is LCPC currently only has, like I said, a total of 50,000 for the whole uh, region um, is working with VDM where we're trying to you know, use them as most effectively. So um, you know, get as much thing out of the buck as you can. So, but there wouldn't be an application on the part of the town. Um, you know, if it's LCPC, it's just a matter of you saying yes, and then I'll go figure out whether our funds can make more sense. Okay, thank you. So those, do those numbers go to direction not very yes, Um, this would likely be before you do the model. Right. Yeah. 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 He does everywhere we work with it. It's good work. Yeah. yeah. I missed that. Who, who, who are you talking about? Roy Chef is uh, okay. what's the name is. Uh, um, they were just at a, a fire there. The, most of the work was standard metal. Yeah. 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 We worked with them a bunch of times up there in Wolf Hill. It's up that yeah. real yeah. road down. I think they never got any fun. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and they, um, yeah. the modeling they did yeah. in Jefferson, there was, you know, two, like a tenth of an inch yeah. in um, the no Halloween storm. Almost no. So no. I don't trust the numbers. <laughs> okay, to, to get this moving along, what's the board's thoughts here? Do you want to have the LCPC to continue going forward? Yes. Yeah, I think it. Sounds like it has a lot of promise. Okay, yeah. so I would look for a formal motion request. What's the language of the motion? Uh, just ask LCPC to continue with the flood mitigation study. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So no so cost to the town. No cost to the town. No. That's the key right there. Yeah. Do you make the motion? Sure, I can. Um, so, motion to allow LCPC to continue with um, the assessment of flood mitigation at Holmes Meadow area. Motion to have second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Why do you call that Holmes Meadow? Doesn't that belong to Black Ridge Construction? I so, I'm not sure that was the next time in the whole network spot. I don't know why it's called Home Meadow either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've seen it called Home Meadow in quite a few older documents, so I've also just referred to it as Home Meadow. So it doesn't belong to homes, it belongs to Black Creek Construction Company. It's River Road Rex, right? Yes. yes. I think, yeah. sorry, we already voted. What do we do? I think we should amend it, though. No. I think it's it's understood where it is. Yeah, I don't there it's not owned by the Holmes family or anything. There's not there's no official designation of it being Holmes Meadow, but okay. I think 
most people know what part of town you're talking about when you say homeless matter. Yeah. But just taking a survey in the room, there's no confusion about. I mean, where the we're thing is about. that we're putting this in our meeting minutes, and I wouldn't know where Homes Meadow was. I know okay. River, I looked it up on my phone actually and found where the bed was to figure out where it was. Um, so, so, but is there interest in amending the motion? I am interested in amending it to the River request. Okay. Is it a friendly amendment? You're, you're, we were making it, and we did actually already vote it. it. Yeah. So, you're making another motion. Sure. Because you're paying in the next <laughs> Make a motion to so move with River Road West instead. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Second. There's a motion and a second. It's actually a right. That's the construction. Any other discussion? No, I don't have that. I don't have that. All those in favor, so by the same guy. Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. The so one of them will go forward. <laughs> or you can do two projects at once. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thanks, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So this is the same place it started from. Yeah. Come <laughs> uh, on, outdoor wreck. Yep. So we don't have anything in the pack on that. We've got a supplemental piece with the map of the kind of the, the affected area for this. So. Uh, we said we'd bring back a little bit more detail. Uh, this is the last meeting you'll have before the letter of interest is due. Uh, the letter of interest, you know, isn't committing us to anything, but we shouldn't file a letter of interest if we're not sincere about being interested in the project. The affected area of the project is really. Um, I, uh, former board member Doug was really big on uh, Johnson as where the trails meet. And this kind of lines up really well with his idea and that, that messaging and marketing for Johnson as a uh, trail connection. This area uh, between, between the Long Trail uh, and VU with our downtown in the middle connecting uh, future parts that we'd like to develop as, as part of this with our tape road trails along the skate park, the old mill park, and looking at future development with the light industrial park, the Juba property, um, as really thinking of these as a, a, a total network and doing improvements to uh, make them more cohesive and uh, a little bit easier to, to access all of them. Um, we'll look at Lisa and Casey to provide a little bit more details beyond that broad big picture. But um, yeah, that, that's where our improvements are focused. We've got planning uh, uh, for a few of these areas and uh, some construction in the Old Mill Park, including uh, some of the work that we had to take out of our initial scope of work for the welcome center. Um, the playground, I don't think there's anything for the playground that's in this. I know I, I fielded a couple of questions about that. The, 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 the playground and this are, are not connected. Uh, are, do you want to add anything to the Brian set? Or? Uh, no, I'm some, I'm some of okay. uh, I can I get a very rough, we have a rough total. Well, the one question they ask you for money is how much are you requesting? And so we've, we've been slogging away at trying to put together costs and stuff. So, and at the moment, uh, and this at the moment still so would include the Holmes Meadow purchase, which was, was like 791. So probably we can subtract that. But at the moment, uh, including admin, present for admin, every, all, all the other elements, we <clears throat> would be requesting about uh, $594,000. Now, minus probably the homes. Um, and at the moment, we, we know what we have on hand, how do you tidy them out? Uh, but they don't care about that right now. They just want to know how much you're asking for. And that's what we've come to so far. 
my device to get to work. Okay. Fourth point. Are we any questions? Board supported for concept. Yeah, and I um, we talked we've talked a lot in the past, especially with Doug, was, was a, a proponent of, of making it more walkable to get to and from Northern Vermont University, which um, and there was been different paths and trails that are proposed and talked about in the past. It's great. There's another neighborhood on um, Main Street East headed straight up that hill to where that uh, Katie Wynn is. There's a lot of foot traffic up and down that uh, that hill. And to me, it doesn't seem all that particularly safe. So I just wanted to put a plug in for whatever trails and connectivity we're talking about that maybe we should start considering that neighborhood so that people who have to walk up and down that hill um, can be a little safer. Well, I think that's a great thing. Interesting question, now that you say that, because my opinion is we should break the letter of impact. And I understand that you want to have a commitment from the board before submitting the letter, but we have not had a projects discussion. So I'm probably gonna say that every time we talk about it. <laughs> getting closer to that discussion. We're getting closer, we're not there. Yeah, and, and I think there are some other open questions and concerns. So I don't think it's, 100% uh, we have no reservation for full steam ahead, but we have a, a sincere interest that we, based on what we understand now, we think we're going to follow through with the project. When it's not committing us. Right. It's just a letter of interest. Yeah. So it is, you know, if we can't straight face say that we don't think we're interested, we shouldn't, but it, it is not a final commitment. My opinion is we've been doing planning on this for what 15 years for much of this, not all of it probably. Yep. Um, there's certainly interest. If we stop talking about it, that's down. You're proposing a, a amendment or a motion to no, because I think we already put a motion in last meeting for the letter of interest. I don't think that changes. We did. I'm pretty sure we did. I recall. I guess, I think, yeah, I feel like we did. I mean, I'm pretty sure we did. Yeah, it was just coach. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to encourage this to happen. Um, I've heard uh, Rec has blossomed into an amazing amount of uh, economic development, if you want to call it that. Um, I'm fortunate enough to work in the field part time, and we've never been busier. And I think it's going to be sort of a miss. That we sort of move this back and forth all the time. It's, it's just a commitment. I think it's going to be a miss, but it's not that common. Thank you. I'll also add that I did not, but now it's coming up with like safety concerns. I've walked from where the rail trail meets railroad to the long trail and crossing the 15 there is a little bit sketch that I think that I can get. That's the walk that would help sort of the makers make it to town rather than just stopping at Chelsea Garden, right? Because they're able to be walking on the real trip spaces other than next day hike. So, may I suggest maybe uh, a motion where a letter of interest would be uh, sort of Directed from the select board if we hadn't already approved it. Sure. So moved. Second. Okay, good. Motion and second. A little nice to get a cap. Any other discussion? 
No. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? I said it. Update on the uh, Ed Alexander. Welcome, Sal. All right. The Ed Alexander Welcome Center is coming together. Uh, the work that our volunteers and every, everybody who's put into this has just been phenomenal. If you haven't been down to see it recently, uh, I'd recommend going by and taking a look at the local center. It's really coming together. Uh, you know, walls are up, roof is going on. It, it's really upsetting. And they've done a terrific job uh, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, really just sped up and uh, seeing everything come together at the last minute has been great. Uh, and I really want to thank Lisa and Matt for all of their work on organizing the uh, the, the event around the Welcome Center, also welcoming the Alexanders. And Casey. Yes, and Casey mm -hmm. and Howard and Doug too. have uh, done a lot of work with us. Um, you know, and innumerable other people volunteering their time and uh, working on their art. Public Works Group has done a great job about uh, being making themselves available and filling in uh, different things. The village crew came down uh, when we needed them to help dig uh, their auger for the post holes for the supports. Uh, we got everything mounted for that. That was a huge cost saving for us uh, when they left the, the hand with it. So uh, really everybody's come together to help get this finished and ready for this coming week. Good, perfect. Is it still on budget? With the reduced scope. Yeah. Dedication ceremony at noon on Sunday. Plenty of cotton candy. And uh, yeah, I thought the Alexander family will be there. And, uh, should be a lot of fun. All right, I'm going to borrow those big scissors. You can. <laughs> <laughs> You already bought your hot dogs? Uh, no. Because I got a shitload of those. Well, it's after all, I'm going to shitload of hot dogs. Yeah, you know, those are the ones. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, they're in the freezer. Okay, uh, perfect. I think I have some fresh food ones. No, we have them probably with you because it has fresh food and stuff. Thank you. For the ceremony, and it will be used later, it is for me kind of an honorable list. I know everybody has done stuff, and so it will be on display. And frankly, it's also a way that we're really tracking the in kind work, which we're doing we the training application, and it's always useful. Perfect. Yeah. Good. Anybody got any questions for you, Casey, or Lisa? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Look forward to Sunday. Uh, oh, wait, wait. What's that? You guys really want to hear that? Like, yeah. You want it? Yeah. Well, I'll give it to you. What, what's your What are you going to do? The snow will love to take the cat out. You guys want to hear it? Wait, say that again. The snow will love to take the cat out. You guys want to hear it? Wasn't there what's some it? kind of stipulation when I came years ago? <laughs> No. It wasn't okay. Take it. What are they, <laughs> what are they for? Uh, over behind Vermont Flannel, we have Bigfoot. Oh, uh, yeah. We want to add more things Stuff. like that. So the cow works. So you... That's fine. It's trapped in the drawer. I'm not yeah. sure how it would help to hold up the element. Well, it's fire by that. Is it? Okay. okay. Yeah. Wait, what are we doing? How are you supposed to do that? I don't know exactly where we're moving it right now. Somewhere on the Sunday. Awesome. Probably. So, no bigfoot in the drawer. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Would they consider putting this on the rail trail? Yeah, that, I mean, it's, it's very possible we could do it in different locations. But yeah, it's a joke. Uh, the list I have on here is pretty long, but the rail trail is one of those lists. Um, Perfect. Love it. Like a fine cow. <laughs> where people come up on their snowmobiles each year yeah. to find we did like a picture thing last year with, with Bigfoot so yeah. we could do the same thing with, with oh, that would be a lot of fun <laughs> yeah, does, does the snowmobile club do those <laughs> tag things of like you take a picture with your <laughs> sled <laughs> next to a thing and yes. just, then the next guy has to a bunch of clubs do that and yeah that's what basically we're trying to get some of this yeah that would be great for it I <laughs> think so <laughs> Yeah, if we keep it near a shared use trail, it would kind of be the best so that hikers and other people can see it and use it too. Sure. Uh, I wish you did a solar operator. We put these hikers on the big roof. It's all big, right? Red eye looking at it. Yeah. All right, going downhill. Municipal sidewalk. So uh, the village has received bids for. Uh, Building a side or for completing the sidewalk replacement out in front of the municipal building, and they'd like to share the cost with us. Um, uh, Rosemary, I'm looking for a little bit of assistance from you. Do you have a, a dollar amount? $5,800. Total. Thank you. So half of that. That was fixing where the worst gravel now near the front door. It's either repairing or replacing the sidewalk. That goes all the way around. Well, this At least the front part. Yes. Okay. Do we have a scope of work for that? I don't know. Well, I, I'm not approve anything within a scope of work. I don't want just that old sidewalk ripped out and new one put down. It was not installed properly in the first place, and it's all kinds of specs to install it. To install a sidewalk, especially if it's blocked on in cold weather, and. Uh, and I want to know if it was two bids, three bids, four bids, or just one bid. I'm not going to go with just one price without any scope of work. Do you know any of these answers? Well, I know that Troy talked to uh, the LT. Okay. That's one individual. I don't see any specifications. I don't see anything firm there. It's either repair or replace. I think the whole thing should be completely ripped up from the door all the way down and done properly. And so if we're going to do the job, we might just walk it away. Is that not the plan to rip it up? Oh, I don't know. You, you don't know. Okay. All I heard was repair or replace. So repair would mean taking out a bad section and putting another one in. It's, it, nothing tells me that the whole thing is going to be taken out and completely fixed properly. And I don't want a, a job do that's not going to be good. Do you have any? I know Will said something about replacing, but uh, that's what I, I understand also. Yeah. I Basically, the village is taking a lead on this, and that's only because we're the part owners. Well, if we're going to pay half of it, I want a good job done. And uh, it, even if uh, we had to pay more money to have a better job done, I have no problem with that. I just don't want a job that's going to. Come back and bite us a couple of years down the road and have somebody say to me, Well, why the heck didn't you have that job done right in the first place? I don't need that kind of talk. And I and I don't see anything in front of me that tells me exactly what they're gonna do. I agree. We should have specs at the very least, and then we should go for our purchasing, even if it is the village who's initiating. Uh, we're at a little bit of a disadvantage here. Um, Donna, do you have any insight into? Well, I, I mean, I, I listened to the meeting recording, and it's, it's in the minutes what they talked about. I, I don't think they went into a lot of detail. I know there isn't a lot of detail in the minutes about what was planned, and I, I don't recall them really discussing in detail exactly what was going to be done. I read their minutes in their cursory to say what so I'm not going to get involved in this. I, mean, I will vote no. You could probably call. Uh, um, you would want to call Troy now, I guess, but it's on the page. Well, when does the village need an answer by? I don't know. You don't know? I, mean, I imagine they probably want to get started there. So I think they've talked before about needing to get some like this done by like 
mid-September or something because they can't they can't do it too late in the year. I think yeah, they don't solve I know it, it needs it bad. Some of the seniors have been yeah, I know it needs it bad. Look, look at it. we're in the middle of August right now. We've had all summer long to, to get this done. And now it's being forced on us and within without information that we need to make a proper decision. I don't like it. What's forced pleasure? We have enough reservation here to yeah. okay, Brian, can you follow up? Sorry, either talk to Troy or something and explain exactly what the plans were. Okay, uh, public work supervisor. It's, this is sort of a uh, just got thrown in as a placeholder. Do we want to start advertising for that position yet? Are you moving the process forward? We need to get on this as soon as possible. We have completed the uh, appeal period for our decision. So we're free to move forward now. Yes. Does the board want to direct Brian to start the process? Yes. Post the job. Seeing anyone say no? I guess we'll, we'll have you start that process, Brian, please. Well, I'd like to uh, see the job description updated with some of the items from previous job descriptions that we've approved over the past few months about quality and, you know, we encourage, you know, the verbiage. I don't want to use the wrong verbiage, but you know what I'm talking about. We have I, I do, but I, I didn't take the liberty of drafting a new job description, but I, I know exactly what parts you're talking about. But. So basically replace the box at the end. Yeah. The verbiage that we have previously approved. Yeah, we, we approved that most recently for the administrative assistant job. I think there was like something since then, actually, but yeah. Okay. So I'm sensing that the board wishes to move forward with that process. Uh, a couple items before we move into executive session. One thing I wanted to just bring up was uh, the arson that happened this weekend. Uh, it's not the first arson case we've had in this town. We've had quite a rash of it. The Sheriff's Department has a reward for leading to arrests. Any information? Do we want to, as a town, pony up any money? add to that reward and publicize that. What are you suggesting? I have no suggestion. I'm just going to introduce it and see if there was any interest. You know how much the sheriff's department I do not. How many arson investigations are there on the current? I mean, you say we've had quite a rash. I Over, most of them were all in Manchester property. Um, I don't know, do you know how many cars over there? There was one up by the rail trail. I'm wearing a Right. Okay. Uh, that was the first one. I think there may have also been one at uh, one of the parking lots. Yeah. They, yeah. It, you said it's college? I believe. Yeah, there was one at the college. Uh, Manchester had two, possibly three, I believe. And the latest one was actually in somebody's yard yeah. while they were home next to the house. It could be a little bit uh, more brazen, I think. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess I'd be open to have to get more information on what the status is with the sheriff and the current reward they're offering. I feel like we spend an awful lot of money on law enforcement. Clearly, this is a high priority, but I just don't have enough information about it to start throwing money at it. Okay. I'd also like to understand does offering rewards actually result in? Convictions, you know, not convictions, but maybe arrests if they're lucrative so, enough for people. Or somebody, well, that's that. the thing. Like, I we can just assume that that's the case, but are there any statistics that show that that's actually the case? I don't know. That arsonist installed, <clears throat> somebody received a reward for it. 
Because there was a reward for that one, right? And they caught that one. So they caught the guy. I don't know. I don't know. Who. Maybe we could revisit this, Eric. Yeah. Okay. Because it is. I'll, I'll check and Roger, see what's going on and uh, if, what his reward is. And maybe it's something we could add a little to. Okay. Go ahead, Scott. Just talking to some residents um, within the village. This is really typical. Uh, this fire happened, you know, they've been happening around, but usually in parking lots and remote areas. People live here. Yeah. And it was done on a road that has kids in tech housing. And it's it's unsettling. And I was wondering as a town select board, you have your little news stack on your webpage. Come up with something that says, you know, this is ridiculous and condemn it. Mm -hmm. If anybody sees something that's odd, to make a phone call. This is the spooky to have this happen in the village limits on a busy street. Yeah. To boot. It, if it happened to you or myself or any of us. Exactly. Yeah. So if it's nerve wracking. That's a good point. I mean, we could, especially since there is a reward, we could push it on the front porch for other avenues that we have in Facebook or whatever to say we want to catch whoever's on. Yeah. And a few people just walking through railroad street past our garden weren't even really aware of it. Uh -huh. yeah. So people need to be aware of it. Yeah. Sure, like everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised they hadn't been on front porch forum yesterday yeah. today. It's crazy. I haven't seen a news release actually from the sheriff's department either. Oh, there is one. Oh, there, there is one. one. It says there's a reward, but it doesn't say how much. Which you would think it they would put how much was there. They don't want to but that's off their web page. That's not. This is off their Facebook page. Right. So I don't do Facebook, so I would never see it. They had the exact same press release in CAX, so, okay. but it didn't give the amount. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll follow up with Roger because I think it is concerning. Point. <clears throat> I'll, I'll publicize it on our, yeah. all of our social media channels. Thank you. We should probably post it like around to maybe we could post something like Sterling and the gas station. I don't know if the gas station has a place, but places that people who aren't paying attention to town business are seeing it too. Yeah. 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 Well, right? <laughs> <laughs> you just don't want to be they say the word reward at the top, they might. Okay, any other items before? Uh, I wanted to circle back. Rosemary, did we get a liquor license application for uh, the Minima Gallery? No. I think we may have. Or a special event thing? Yeah. Oh, well, go ahead and When do you think it would have came? Oh, I can tell it because I'm talking. When you're on vacation. Probably. Never take vacation. We could do that on the other side of the table. Yeah, I think we could do that. If there's no further items, I would entertain a motion to executive session to discuss union negotiations. I move we go into executive session uh, with the select board, uh, Ryan Rosemary, to, uh, to discuss union negotiations as allowed by 1 VSA 313A1. Motion to have a second. Second. Second, any discussion? None. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed, show us in executive session at eight. Show us out of the executive session at 9 12. At this at time, entertain a motion to enter into executive session for discussion on restitution. I make the motion that we go into executive session to discuss restitution as a result to the town uh, with the select board, uh, Brian and Rosemary, under 
one VSA 313A-1. Motion, we have a second. Second. Motion, second, any discussion? None, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? So, second session at 9.13.